please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, very good morning. You're watching Trading R. I'm Ekta Batra and with me is Sonia Shinoy. And it's turning out to be a day of consolidation, really, you'd have to say. So after that fall that we saw in the last one hour of trade yesterday, it seems as though the Nifty is taking a bit of a breather today. And we're largely treading water like most of the Asian markets ahead of the FOMC meet. Uh, the markets have tra recovered rather from that negative bias. But nonetheless, just about uh, wait and watch ahead of that FOMC meet. And the other things which seem to be Top of mind is the CPI inflation, which has surged along with the core inflation this time around for the month of November. Bond yields, which have hardened as well, and not to mention a lot of stock, stocks continue to be in focus. And that should come up for you. Stocks such as Bharti Airtel and from the broader markets, Prabhat Dairy, which is up another, uh, it's up around 14 odd percent today, and something like Punj Lloyd as well. Good volumes in that one up 9% today. So overall, turning out to be a bit of a wait and watch session at this point in time. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Ikta. Sleepy days for the market, right? Mm -hmm. I guess it's that December feeling. Yeah. So many FIIs have gone on holiday waiting for the trend to emerge uh, come uh, January. But in terms of individual pockets, you were pointing out a couple of them. I think what really stands out is the oil and gas stocks today. So all your oil marketing company is doing really well. Uh, we can perhaps get Sudarshan Sukhani of S2Analytics.com to give us his views as well. So let's get him straight on. Sudarshan, uh, good morning. You know, Ashwini was telling us uh, about an hour back that it's become a market that's increasingly difficult to trade intraday. It's only for very nimble-footed traders. Would you agree? Well, I, I suppose he, he's the expert on this because uh, I don't do very little trading intraday. Uh, my Usually my trades carry forward uh, for the index especially one, two or three days. So, But I, I guess the current market uh, environment is very difficult for intraday traders. There's something else, Sonia. Once we embark on a bull market, the big money, the real wealth is made by carrying positions, by taking advantage of the continuous gains that the market gives. Intraday, those gains do not come. Okay. Uh, well, Sudarshan, for the Nifty, in any case, how would you be approaching it, especially ahead of so many queues that are lined up for our markets? Oh, I'm closing my eyes and ears to the news flow, just looking at the charts. We had a small and mild and decent correction. And in the morning, I said I will be a buyer if the Nifty goes into the green. It went into the green and we are buyers in the Nifty. And I don't think the news will affect the index. It may be volatile for a couple of hours because of the FOMC or because of the exit polls. That's a mm -hmm. different issue. But the small correction is over. I am buying the Nifty. I suggest traders should also go long in the Nifty and expect a cross of the 350 levels sooner or later. So be long, but avoid the Nifty Bank, which is a little choppy. Okay. Well, you know, just before we ask you about your own stocks, Sir Sudarshan, wanted your comments on two pockets that have surged quite a bit these days. One of them is the dairy stocks, you know, Prabhat Dairy, uh, Parag Milk, etc. And the other is the paper stocks. I know you don't generally recommend some of these smaller names, but anything here that catches your eye? Yes, between the two, you are right about the dairy stocks. And there is buying here still possible. If you are not for a day trade, of course. But if you are looking to buy and hold for a few weeks to months, both the stocks, Parag Dairy and the other Prabhat one, are Prabhat, are both buying opportunities in spite of the big gains they have seen. Unfortunately, I can't see the, say the same about paper. Paper is a dull and deadbeat industry. Now, of course, it can do anything, but I think it's best avoided. Okay, so Darshan, so your picks are for now? Well, uh, Hexaware is a buy, you know, uh, mid-cap IT stocks are doing their own thing. And they're keeping continuously in a strong momentum uptrending market. So it's just one of the uh, stocks I've selected for the day. The entire sector is a buy, actually. Hexaware is a buying opportunity for the day. So is Raymond's. Raymond's is doing something very unusual. It's having a very strong momentum, strong upside rally, minor dips. So Raymond's is a buying opportunity. Just to balance it, Siemens is a short sell. But short selling should be done only intraday. Sure. Do not carry short positions forward. Okay, all right, Sudarshan. Just hold that thought. We have Twitter queries, but we'll come back to that in just a bit. There's some positive news which has actually come in on Unitech because the stock is reacting higher, up around 3 to 4% where the Supreme Court says the NCLT's order on the government 
of the government uh, takeover of Unitech is basically stayed at this point in time by the Supreme Court and you can see that uptake which is coming in at this point. We're going to get you Ashpreet to talk more about what really transpired in the Supreme Court with regards to the NCLT order. Um, and I think we have her with us. Uh, Ashpreet, over to you if you could just fill us in on all of the details. Well, yes, uh, here's a turn of events. In fact, the government, after moving the NCLT and getting an interim order, has come to the Supreme Court and apologized saying that they should not have gone ahead and moved the NCLT. Now, the Supreme Court has staged the NCLT order, which was passed two days, uh, on Friday as far as going ahead and taking over Unitech's board by the government nominees is concerned, which means that the case now comes back and is in the ball of Supreme Court. We have to wait and see what happens here, because for now, the NCLT order stayed, which means that the Unitech board remains intact. The Supreme Court order is very clear that to get the Chandra brothers out of jail, Unitech will have to deposit 750-odd crores uh, to the court. Uh, in fact, uh, Mukul Rahadgi, who was appearing for Unitech, once again reiterated today that there are already negotiations going on and they are in the process of raising this money. Back to you. Okay, so do you know what the next course of, uh, the next step could be now that the case is in the hands of the Supreme Court, Ashpeet? Well, yes, uh, after um, today's order, there will be a date given where Unitech will be heard at length as far as bringing out the two brothers from jail is concerned. In fact, home buyers will also be heard at length as to what needs to be done as far as the 700 odd crores which need to be paid back to home buyers is concerned. So we have to wait and see what will be the process followed here. But so far, the Supreme Court is all, uh, order is clear as far as the earlier order is concerned that there will be no coercive action taken against any of the board members till the Supreme Court passes any such order. Back to you. Okay. okay. Huh. All right, Ashmeet, we're going to get you more details on this as uh, and when the story develops. But as of now, it is a stay order which has come in from the Supreme Court with regards to the NCLT order on Unitech. Remember that uh, Unitech owes over 7,800 crores to 16,300 home buyers, just to put it into context at this point in time. So the Unitech, uh, anyway, uh, seven rupees stock and just about um, given up all of its gains that we saw momentarily post the news. But uh, I think we can get back to talking to Sudarshan and answer a couple of those Twitter queries then. Uh, Sudarshan, the first one is from Balchandran, who has 70 shares of Kadila Health at 496. He wants to know if he should average out. Well, uh, averaging out is not a good idea. So to uh, that part of the question is that he should not average out. He's, uh, the prices are much lower and uh, you don't actually average out, uh, you know, speculative stocks like pharma. But hold on. So the view is, it, because it's already come down to a very, uh, say, low level and there's some support there, there's no sense in now doing anything else except hold. So please hold, but do not average. Okay, hold on, but do not average. Uh, that's the word coming in. By the way, the market is extending some gains now. So it's it's been all over the place the last couple of days. But today, from the lows, the market has picked up pace, especially the bank nifty, which is now up almost about uh, three-tenths of a percent. And look at that surge. Just in the last five minutes, the market has moved to the high point on all three indices, nifty, bank, and the mid-caps. What's really aiding the market this morning, HDFC Bank, remember, it was a key loser yesterday. It's actually picking up pace now. TCS is also moved to the high point and Reliance Industries is now up. Uh, look at HDFC Bank, sudden surge there seen. So we'll come to you in a bit, uh, Sudarshan, on how to trade the Nifty. But another Twitter query coming in uh, is uh, on uh, Punjab National Bank. Our Twitter user has 400 shares of uh, Punjab National Bank at 187 rupees. And he wants to know what he should be doing with PNB at the moment. Uh, let's just get the intraday chart of uh, PNB up on board. Uh, it'll be with you in a minute. 172 is where the stock is currently at. So he is uh, making a bit of a loss here. So Darshan, what should he do? Oh, he should sell. PSU banks are not a favorite of this market. And they are likely to be underperformers consistently. This is an underperforming sector. Private banks are so much better. You just talked about HDFC Bank. Let him sell, buy HDFC Bank or ICICI Bank, and then he'll be much better off. But in any case, he must, he should sell PNB, should sell all these PSU banks. 
Okay, all right, uh, Sudarshan, we're going to leave it on that note. But remember, viewers, that you can tweet your questions to at CNBC TV 18 News and at CNBC TV 18 Live with the hashtag Ask CNBC TV 18. And our technical experts will advise you on your investments. We need to take a break. No, before that, we're going to get you more strategies. Uh, Yogesh Mehta of Mutilal Oldswal is with us. Yogesh, over to you then. What are your FNO calls this morning? Uh, yeah, I think good morning. Uh, overall, market has seen a drag of 0.8% yesterday, but we believe that uh, 10,180, 10,170 is the ideal uh, uh, support zone for the market where it left uh, gap. So, uh, unless and until it crosses, uh, breaches that level, we are bullish on that and we are recommending all the buy calls today. Uh, first of all, it's Titan currently it is quoting at 838, 839 in the future segment. Keeping a stop loss of 830, uh, one can look at 860 as a price target. Other one is Tech Mahindra, which is on a IT uh, side, which is uh, showing strength since last two days odd. And uh, currently it is 507, 508 in the future segment. Keeping a stop loss of 498 or 500 rupees, one can look at a price target of 522 to 525 range. Uh, the third one which we are recommending is uh, ONGC on the defensive side. 185 and half is the future segment price. Uh, for the intraday purpose, one can keep a 183 as a stop loss. And target could be in the range of 191-192 levels. Okay, for sure. Well, the market is really picking up now. So it's at the high point, up almost about half or percent. And uh, more details coming in on the Unitech case. By the way, the stock has been all over the place and is now down almost about six or percent. As we told you, there is uh, some relief for Unitech now. Uh, there will be no coercive action taken on Unitech. And the next hearing is, I think, there was a date. Okay, January 12th is when the Supreme Court will uh, take up the next hearing. The case, remember, is now in the hands of the Supreme Court and the Unitech board for the moment remains absolutely intact so there won't be any changes over there uh, the stock as you can see is down almost about five odd percent but penny stock there let's also talk about the bond yields because that's been the big talking point over the last few days the 10-year benchmark has hit to 7.23 percent that's the kind of moves we've seen of course uh, higher inflation is something that has spoke the markets as well as the rising crude prices Vivek Rajpal the rate strategist at Nomura India joins in to give us more Vivek hi good morning uh, do you see more more upsides for the 10 year bond yield? Well, uh, bond markets are certainly under pressure. Um, there is uncertainty on the fiscal front as well as uh, last inflation print uh, was, uh, uh, I mean, both the headline uh, as well as internals were not uh, supportive. Bond markets will remain under pressure. Having said that, I mean, uh, I personally believe that it should be looked in the context of uh, 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 the fact that uh, we have seen a decent rise in yield uh, since September end. Mm. So uh, we may get consolidation here. Um, having said that, I think for bond markets to uh, get supported, we need some fiscal clarity. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, moves may remain technical in the near term. Okay. Vivek, hi, morning. When you talk about some clarity or fiscal clarity, what exactly would are you referring to? And uh, do you think that yields could soften post that clarity, if you could provide some details? All right. So as far as the fiscal uh, uh, uncertainty is concerned, I think there are two uncertainties. Number one is near-term uncertainty, which is how much will be the bond supply in quarter four of this fiscal year. Uh, if there is no extra bond supply, then uh, yes, we may see actually bond yields coming down. Uh, and number two, uh, the medium-term fiscal consolidation path, whether government sticks with the medium-term fiscal consolidation path. So, for example, uh, for FI19, uh, what's the fiscal deficit? Uh, those are the two things which market bond clarity on. Hmm. Okay. So, in, in terms of your view on what the RBI could do here, have the odds of a, a rate hike now increased, Vivek, because of the kind of surge that we've seen as far as uh, inflation is concerned? Right. So, I think uh, after yesterday's inflation print, the debate has clearly shifted uh, uh, from, uh, 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 from probably monetary easing as next step to monetary tightening as next step. Mm -hmm. um, uh, market is... Uh, uh, pricing in, uh, I think, uh, approximately two hikes in next two years. Uh, whether uh, that comes forward uh, in terms of whether market pricing gets aggressive or not, 
uh, from here on will largely depend on how inflation trajectory pans out. But yes, after yesterday's uh, inflation print, uh, the debate has shifted uh, uh, towards uh, when and uh, if there is a possibility of tightening going ahead. Hmm. Uh, Vivek, we were just having a chat with Sonal Varma of Nomura as well and as a house I think you all believe that there will be no rate hike in 2018 and the RBI would be on hold. But do you think right. that uh, the bonds are factoring in something else in 2018 that yes we could probably see a rate hike as, as soon as uh, 2018 and right. by when? Right. So I think, uh, I mean, uh, uh, to be frank, uh, when we talk about bond markets, it's a whole yield curve, right? Bond mm -hmm. markets have to take a view of uh, a much longer view uh, than one year or so. And the bond markets tend to react uh, uh, ahead of the tightening cycle with the view of, uh, with the view uh, which may be much longer than uh, one year. Uh, uh, yes, I think market is uh, at this juncture pricing in um, uh, some possibility of a hike uh, in next one year and if we don't get um, if uh, RBI commentary remains smooth and if we don't get any hike I think that will be um, cheered by the bond markets over time. At this point so the nifty in fact is at the high point of the day 10,280 is where we are at up around four tenths of a percent we've really extended gains for the bank nifty which is up around three tenths of a percent at this point it seems to be more stock specific for the broader market so uh, let's pick up a couple of stocks just to give you a sense in terms of the kind of stocks which are gaining. Nitco Tiles has had a fabulous month, if not year. That stock is up around 6.6% uh, and at around 108 rupees. MRPL also doing quite well. It's above its 200-day moving average. So MRPL should come up for you as well. Uh, that stock is up around 3.5 to 4 odd percent at this point. So colourful day, you'd have to say, for a lot of stocks from the broader markets as well as for the Nifty. But let's get talking about one uh, important commodity, which is probably going to determine the trend as well for the markets. Crude, Manisha is here to tell us what's happening there. Manisha. Volatile volumes thinning is the way to really talk about it. And we did see 2% decline in the New York session yesterday, but we are trading more than a percentage point higher right now. Uh, the decline came in after the EIA report, which suggested that you are perhaps looking at the U.S. output at a record high of 10.02 million barrels by the first quarter of 2018 itself. But the strength has come back because the markets are still looking at the Fortis pipeline crack. It also has to do with the U.S. weekly inventory data that would be released in the evening today. And the indications are that you are looking at a big withdrawal in the inventories. And that, of course, is bullish for the prices. Having said that, we still are holding very firm on the charts. And most of the global experts are still pointing about uh, yet another spike coming in for the crude oil prices. It's looking bullish on charts and we are nicely holding above 63 and a half for the global markets. Aurobindo Gayan joins us to talk more about the strategies there. Aurobindo, what is your sense when it comes to the crude oil prices? At these current levels, nearly six tenths percent up for the Indian markets as well. Are you still initiating buys? Uh, well, uh, uh, post the OPEC meeting was done in the month, uh, November end and since then we have been actually seeing crude oil being uh, trading in a very thin range of uh, 3 to $4 dollars. Uh, on the lower side, 54, 55 dollars, and now it's almost 58 dollars. So I think that band is going to be uh, sustaining for next couple of trading session. And but then uh, the broader perspective or broader range remains onto the bullish trend. And uh, since we have seen a bit of rebounding this morning, I think some more pullback could be also seen. But then we also have to understand that 58 dollar remains to be a very strong resistance. Unless that is broken out, we would not see price moving to a new band of 60 dollars. So in the shorter term perspective, maybe market is going to continue to consolidate in this range, as I said. But then uh, as short uh, as a medium term perspective, I think buying on dips would be the right strategy for crude oil. Okay, and how are you looking at the natural gas prices? Because the global markets have seen the distillate or the energy products as well do well. And especially with the energy demand coming in, how are you looking at that book here? Well, uh, natural gas is completely a weather play. So I think any time weather changes and the reactions is seen on the prices. And we have seen a huge uh, amount of decline in the prices last couple of trading sessions, especially last evening also natural gas in the Henry Hub spot has also declined. I think the trend precisely holding on to the bearish tone. And Indian market, if I would say, as I saw, as I saw the chart this morning, I think another six to seven rupees decline could be seen uh, downside. And uh, at the uh, NYMEX, I think 2.60 is the uh, target that we, we can expect in the short term.
Okay, that's about the energy markets. But Aurobindo, what is your sense for the industrial commodities? Because while we started uh, Shanghai with 2% down for the steel prices, zinc and lead kind of commodities actually have fared well, especially lead, which recently hit a six-year high as well on the back of battery demand, mine supply shutdown, etc. How are you looking at a couple of these? Uh, in the last 15, 20 days, if we see, we have seen a bit of price correction in most of the metals. And uh, uh, if we look at it now, for the last three, four trading sessions, it just started uh, bottoming out, perhaps. And as I have been always telling, zinc and lead are uh, looking always positive. I think, uh, as you said rightly, lead is still looking positive. I think uh, both these metals are still positive and buying on dips would be the right strategy. But then if I talk about nickel or aluminum, they are completely different, uh, different uh, side of the market and they are seeming mm. to be still uh, onto the weaker side of the trend. Okay, and very quickly before we let you go, any sense on the rupee ahead of the Fed meeting? Because the US dollar, of course, has been very volatile. Yes, I think uh, more than that, uh, domestically it's been on a stronger note. I think all that weakness that we have seen should uh, erase perhaps. Okay. Uh, and uh, we might see 6440 as a good support uh, in the uh, today's trading session. Okay, Aurobindo and Manisha, thanks for giving us those.